Hello all, Jamie Rogers here today for Craftmania. Um, basically, I want to talk to you about my brand new collection. Now, you may have seen this come out in February, but it's time that we talk about it on our Craftmania YouTube channel. And I want to talk you through lots of samples and show you some basic folds and hopefully give you loads of inspiration and tell you about the offers at Craftmania. Now, before we get involved with all of that lot, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit the little bell icon on and then that way you'll be notified when we upload more videos for you to watch. Now you may not have seen the tea bag folding collection so I'm going to treat it like you know absolutely nothing. This came out a little while ago and it's sort of my baby really. I've been working on it for a little while with creative expressions. It's something I've been super excited to bring out and the response has been incredible. What we've designed basically is dies and stamps which coordinate to make tea bag folding rosettes. Now, tea bag folding has been around for many, many years. If you don't know tea bag folding, a um, long, long time, and um, I believe '92, and it was invented by a lady who lives in Holland. And basically, the tea bags used to come in little packets, and she started folding them and making rosettes out of them. Technology's moved on a lot since 92 and we now have the ability to make stamps and dies that coordinate and we also have the ability to add score lines to our dies to make them tricky folds really easy to do which is why I wanted to bring it back and give it to you in an easy to do format. So each set has its own A5 set of stamps and I'll show you all the different designs in a moment what we can achieve with them. This obviously is the square design. All the sets work on the same idea. You're going to get two of the smaller tile or design and one of the larger one. And then because I like to give you as much value as money as possible um, with creative expressions, we've fitted in as many words as we can do to each and every set. This set's lovely, actually, because it has on it, you are truly one in a million. And then you've got mum, dad, brother, friend and sister. So you can add your pieces where you want to on the insides and the outsides of your cards. And of course, it works really well for scrapbooking. With your dies, so this is your die packaging. Um, on the front, obviously, it shows you your two different designs and the sizes that they're going to come to you in. When you open out the packaging, there are the four folds we're going to be talking about on today's video. I'll refer to this again later, but it's more just as a reminder that you will have all that information at your fingertips in paper form and on this video as well, so that you can come back and watch it time and time again. On the reverse, you also have your dies, obviously, that's the important bit. And we've got the little and the large ones. And as you can possibly see, we have your cut line run around the outside and then your score lines doing the patterns in the middle. That's the bit that's going to educate your paper. So when it comes to folding them, it's really, really easy to do. Follow the instructions and you're going to be making rosettes in seconds and they're so easy to do. If you want to stamp your images, stamp them, line your die up, cut them out and you're going to be good to go. So let's have a little look at our board showing you how all that lot's going to look. These are your stamp designs that have been cut out to show you how they're going to be before we start folding them. And then, of course, our words stamped out as well. Now, price wise at Craftmania, these are all on offer. I've got lots of offers to tell you about. At the moment we've uploaded or uploaded this video, there is currently 15 percent off of the dies and the stamps and the paper pads. We haven't even spoke about the paper pads. We'll talk about the paper pads soon, I promise. Or you can save even more and buy a big bundle with the pads and the dies and the stamps and everything in it. So price wise, dies, let's go back to it in this format. Dies, £12.99, reduced to £11.04 if you just want one set. Stamps, £12.99, reduced to £11.04 if you just want one set. If you do decide at the end, and we'll talk about this more later, but if you do decide you want to go for the complete bundle of all of the dies, all of the stamps and the paper pads, that should be £123.99 and it is reduced to £99.99. So just a penny under 100 and it will give you everything that I'm going to talk to you about in this little sort of video regarding your dies, your stamps and your papers, which would be a great place for you to be. So shall I show you what you can do with them? If you haven't seen these, you're hopefully going to fall in love mediums and places and things we can work with obviously vary um when we're talking about origami in any format you should be working between a 60 to 160 gsm but it doesn't mean you can't break that rule or live outside them lines and go off to things like vellum like we've done on this one so stamped and folded on vellum we can 
colour our papers with misters and bits like that. We can bring in fancier folds, ones we're not even going to talk about on this video. There are so many folds and so much education out there for tea bag folding. These dies are going to work in that format as well. Bring in your Christmas elements, turn them into Christmas trees if you don't want to make rosettes with them. Bring in your stamping and your inking and make them match in with your background papers if you wish to. Go for really big, bold cards like this one with our solid pillar edge. Instructions for our solid pillar cards. These fold down flat so you can post them um, are on our blog, which you will find on the Craft Mania website if you want to know more about how to make one of them. You're going to see a few of these in this little video. Papers, by the way, all the papers you are seeing are in the pads. I promise we will show you the pads soon. If you don't want to be folding your stamped images and you just want to use your stamps as backgrounds, of course you can do that too. You don't have to use everything in the way it's intended all of the time. Bring in your purples, bring in your dyes, bring in your backgrounds, your embossing folders, layer them up. Go for paper, just ordinary copy of paper, the sort you'd print on, that's a 90 GSM weight, perfect for folding. Throw on some pixie sparkles and then cut it and layer it, fold it as you'd like to. Do exactly the same with your pixie sparkles and also bring in your airless misters and really play around with them too. So you don't have to just work with the stamps, you don't have to just work with the dies and you don't have to stick to pattern paper. It's really up to you to play and experiment and bring in all the items you want to. If you'd like a different shape, how about our octagons? Same idea again, same instructions on the inside. So there's multiple folds for you to learn how to do. Dies are on the reverse, same two sizes, same prices. Should be 12 99 but at the time the video is uploaded, only £11.04. And, and then, of course, we have matching stamps to go with them, shown here on our board already cut out for you, but you have your stamp designs. And you have your matching wording. Stamps, once again, should be £12.99, but only £11.4p. Kicking things off with this one, showing you another one where we've just stamped over a background and layered it. Again, we really don't have to fold them every time if we don't want to. Bring in more cards for you. Layer your small designs on top of your large stamps. Not only use them for the rosettes in the middle, use them for photo corners or corners to hold your panels in place. The choice is yours. Bring them in for your more manly cards, your dark colours, your, your grey scales, your bits like that. Or go to town, bring on the glitters. This is using all our polished silk glitter that, of course, we have at Craft Mania. And lots of big gems, bits like that, if you want them to be a bit more blingy. Talking of blingy, why not go for your easel cards and make them the focal point to your easel. Bringing in lots of gems and glitz and bits if you want to on top of them. If you don't want to make Christmas trees, you don't want to make rosettes, make butterflies. Two of them pop together on opposite sides. Little butterfly body here from the delightful butterflies die set that, of course, we have at Craft Mania. And you could be making your own very Oriental inspired butterflies instead. Again, bring in them paper pads we're going to be looking at shortly. Layer them up between the different layers and you've got a sort of beautiful tone on tone cards. Once again, with this design, bringing in the glitz. This one's got some Secura Jelly Glaze pens on it and some glitter, nice big buttons in the middle and gems just to finish it off. If you prefer a different shape, there are four shapes, I warn you. I don't know how you're going to pick if you're just going to go for one. Pointy petals. Pointy petal stamps. I think this is probably my favourite, but I shouldn't say that, should I? Pointy petal stamps. Again, these are just beautiful. I love the fact we've managed to bring you a poinsettia in here. So if you're thinking of Christmas, that's grand for you already. And you've got your nice big sentiments around it as well to work with. This one, again, gives me a bit of oriental vibes, which I really like. And that one, I think, would be really good for men's cards too, because it's a bit ornate, but not too OTT. Die wise, exactly the same again. We have your packaging, we've got your instructions on the inside, we have your dies on the reverse. Lots of cards for this one. Buckle up. We're going to go in for the greens first of all. These are using our pixie sparkles. If you prefer, you could go for just a small rosette in the corner, coloured with alcohol markers. We can go back to the idea of doing our butterflies once again. This is just copy of paper from your printer once again. Um, covered with pixie sparkles to give it that shimmer. Talking of Christmas and a good one to show you, use your large dies to cut the apertures to sink your smaller dies into the middle of so that your shapes coordinate and you've got them layers ready done there. 
if you'd like to make it a bit more vintage, bring in some subtle glitter around the edge here, a big button in the middle, use your text, lay it onto an embossing folder. Or if you want to keep it simple and you want to colour code these to a football team maybe or a sports club or anything else. This is just one sort of image stamped and then one colour of a felt tip brought in to do all of the light blue shading or colouring. Again, really easy to do. Could be multiple tones to, to support a football team, etc. If you wish to just use them as corner elements to so hold in layers or photos, once again, this shows you, you don't have to always bring in the rosette. We can just have little 3D butterflies in the middle. This is one of our stamp cuts done with stays on on black. Um, sorry, done with black stays on on top of gold mirror card. Or if you want to layer your sizes, so don't just stick to one size, bring in your two different sizes, layer them up together, go even bolder than that. Do this and then do it again, stick them back to back with a ribbon in the middle and turn them into Christmas tree ornaments. These papers have been covered with um, purple spell, airless mister and heavenly hues of the pixie sparkles, if I remember rightly. Go again for your big, your bold cards, go for your um, collapsible pillar cards with that really big focal point in the middle using your paper pads which we're going to share with you shortly or stick to just one tone and I love teal so stamping teal folding teal layering teal add sentiments in teal job done really classy really easy bring in your pixie sparkles and treat your papers before you start with them just one color from the january release here used and then folded little love word down here from the canvas collection bring in your fancy background eyes to go behind them all these things you've already got in your stashes you can use um we've already got nice layering dies just bring in your squares and your circles to make the frames layer these up and put them in the middle Again, even the big shapes can be turned into butterflies. These ones are made of vellum once again. So we're talking about different mediums, different ways to use them. And then lastly, just a simple black and white card. If you can make the black and white look stunning, then you know you're halfway there. And this to me is stunning. This is a showstopper and you could add color if you want to. You could add more to it. You could add in flowers, butterflies, wording. But it just shows how simple, just with your stamps, just with your dies, you could work them. Then we move on to a last shape. So hopefully you're already like, well, what do I go for? Let's throw on another one. This is your circle. So once again, we have your two sizes. We have your instructions exactly the same in the middle. And we have your dies on the reverse. To give you a little glimpse at the stamp designs, these I think are really cool because we've got sort of our floral one going on on the small one and more ornate design for the other small one. And then this biggie, this, this one I love because we've got this sort of snowflake element in the center. If you want to dress it for Christmas with glitters or blues or, or crystals, you could do so. Or to be honest, if you don't color it in them sort of fashions and you go off on different tangents with it, nobody would guess it's a snowflake. And if you do want to layer your small designs on top of your big ones, all this work around the edge makes a really lovely layer. I'll be able to show you that in a second. So lots and lots of options for those two. Then when we look to your cards, we could go big like this one with lots of uh, papers being used on here. Or we could go um, a bit more muted or, or vintage with our central part. And again, this is showing you how we can offset our designs or go for different designs. We've got circles in the middle. We've got octagons on the corners. So again, you don't have to just stick to one style if you don't want to. A slightly smaller pillar card this time with our um, stamping being done on top of some of the papers from the paper pad. The back also being decorated with the paper pad. So again, really showing you why you're going to possibly want to add them paper pads into your basket when we get there. Stamping this time with our snowflake design as such, but to make a lovely dad card. Again, I think in teals, we could get away with that not looking too much like a snowflake unless you point it out. And as a team, it with the floral backgrounds could look really lovely. If you want to put two on a card instead of just one, why not? There's no limits to this. Make them hang so they look a bit like baubles. That can work well. Bring in your Miri card, bring in your other dies. That's going to work for you too. Loving using the big buttons in the middle here as well. Um, if you're anything like me, I've got a massive tub of buttons. They're going to work really well for the centres of these, as well as all your gems and bits. Or if you wish to, strip it back, a little bit of colouring on top of your stamping, and then to go for your glitzy backgrounds, add in your wordings and your gems, and you've got your card created. 
Now, all of these, I, I've shown you quite a lot of samples. I'm talking quite quickly through this because I want you to see them all quickly. Um, there is actually more than this. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I've already put more on my Facebook page, which is Jamie Rogers Crafts. If you go onto the Craft Mania website and you click, and this is always worth knowing, if you click on the item, if we've made cards with them, when the item opens, you'll find a gallery of all the cards that we can share with you that have been made with the item. And obviously a lot of these are pictured on there. They're also going onto our Pinterest page as we go through the next few weeks. So if you wanna go and pin them, so you've got that to go back to, feel free to. And anywhere, whether it's on this video or on Pinterest or Facebook, if you've got questions or you wanna know what's been used or where or how, don't hesitate to ask. That's literally my job is to answer them questions for you. So don't be afraid to ask. So we've teased the idea that there are paper pads, haven't we? We've told you a few times that paper pads are in existence. Let's show you the paper pads. So there are two different paper pads. There we have Tranquil Garden, which is this one here. These are a perfect weight for you to be working with, which is really the important bit. They're 120 GSM. So when we spoke earlier about your paper weights being between um, 60 and 160, 120 is a really good thickness for you to be folding. You can see up here the different colours and designs you're going to be receiving within your pad. So you've got a good glimpse of what's coming, but I will give a, a bit of a flip through. I'm pre-warning you, I'm not very good at this. So I thought it might be a warning for you to know to look up there. Let's try and do it that way. This is never easy, even with as much practice, it, it still never gets any simpler. Um, but in short, you've got 16 designs. There are two sheets of each and there are 32 sheets in the pad. So I'm flicking past a few of them, but hopefully it's giving you an idea of what you'll actually be receiving and how you can work with them. And basically what we wanted in, that, in my paper pad is for you to have different tones of the same idea. So if you look at this, you can see how very quickly you can work through and everything's gonna coordinate. So if you wanna make your rosettes several tone or you want backing papers to go with your rosettes, then you've got that ability. It's all gonna coordinate. So that's our patterned paper pad, the Tranquil Garden. On top of that, I warned you, this could be costly, didn't I? We then have Tranquil Shades. Now Tranquil Shades, as you may guess, go with our Tranquil Garden, as in the sense of they are the colours that you have just been seeing with the patterned papers. But instead of being patterned, they are plain papers. So these are the ones you're possibly gonna be using for your mats and layers, or if you want to offset the patterns. It's designed that you can coordinate and know that everything's gonna match for you. Because sometimes, and we've all done it, we go and buy a paper pad, don't we? And we have a sheet like this one, and you then want a mat to go with it, and you just cannot find the right color of card to go with it, or paper to go with it. Well, this pad has it for you. It's all in there ready for you to work with. Same weight again, so they're perfect for you to fold. They're still 120 GSM. Both pads are eight by eight. Um, same amount of sheets again, so you've got 16 shades, two sheets of each, giving you 32 sheets in total. Now your paper pads, if you wish to buy these separately, they are retail, recommended retail price is 9.99 each. At the moment they're on offer at Craft Mania, 15% um, off, so they're eight pounds and 49 pence per pad. Now, as I mentioned, we do have a bundle offer. So if you would like to get your hands on both pads and then all of the dies and stamps we've been looking at, so I'll bring in these boards because I might run out of hands if I try and pick up everything, but it will give you everything we've been sharing with you on this little video, as in regards to your hardware to work with, which will give you all of your dies, eight dies in totals, endless stamps, and your paper pads. The bundle price for this should be 123.99, but it's only 99.99. So it's a saving of 24 pounds, which isn't to be sniffed at, is it? Um, if you've never shopped with Craft Mania, um, and you don't know anything about Craft Mania, you may well know that it's me who sort of works for Creative Expressions and you may see me on the TV and, and you may now know that these are my designs, but you might not know as much about Craft Mania. Craft Mania is mine and my mum's store. We've been trading for 18 years this year. Um, and we've been going a long time. <laughs> it feels like a very long time, but a very good time. And um, we have loads available on the website, which is www.craftmaniacraft.com. 
gone. Uh, our postage works really fair as well. We try to be as fair as we can be as a company. So if you do spend with us and you spend more than five pounds, you live in the UK, your PMP is completely free. If you wish to shop with us internationally, then you can also order on our website and it, it tells you all about how it'll work in the frequently asked questions. But it's capped at just ten pound um, at the moment when, when this video has gone live. Um, ten pounds and you won't pay a penny over that to have it shipped anywhere in the world. Uh, if it's less than £10, we actually refund you the difference. We try to keep it as fair as we possibly can. But now I've given you sort of a run through of all of these cards and all of the bits that you need to get on with them. I suppose I better show you how they work. So following the instructions located inside the packaging, we're going to start off by doing our basic fold. Now, although in the side here we show you them done in plain card, I thought it'd be really fun to bring in our stamps and play around with those at the same time. So I'm going to use a stamp press for my first impression and I'm going to pop down a piece of copier paper to work on. And I'm going to use my magnets to hold that in place. I'm going to ink my stamp up with some just some black plain ink. Now, obviously, being a clear stamp, we can open this up to using our different polishes from Cosmic Shimmer, different brands of ink, different colours, different techniques. Or, of course, we could even heat emboss the images if we wish to. Once stamped, we can open this out and you can see that you're going to receive a really lovely, clear impression to work with. So I'll pop this out and I'll show you how we can die cut them. So to die cut our image, what we're going to be using is the Vassen Creative Cut and Easy. And I'm going to pop down my stamped image and I'm going to bring in my matching die. And I'm going to lay this on top of the actual stamped image. Now, hopefully around the edge here, you'll be able to see that we have a slight black line or a frame as such, which means we're lining up our stamp exactly where it needs to be with our die so that the die will score or emboss the lines perfectly for where we need to fold it. So I'll pop the top onto this and we'll send it through our machine. Now with my machine, I'm allowed to cut directly down into my plates. I'm also you working with magnetic plates on my machine. If you prefer, of course, you can take them into place so that you know nothing will move. Once we've cut that, we can take away the frame, which we can see is perfectly done. And then we, of course, have our panel pre-stamped and pre-scored and ready to fold. Now, I have a feeling you're probably not going to see the score lines on this as easily as you should. So I've done one already in some plain cardstock, just so you can see that sort of spoke on where it's actually embossed into it. And it means that this is now ready for us to go ahead and fold against all of those lines. And it will just educate your paper on where it needs to go. So let's start off by doing fold number one from inside the packaging. So to start off with, all you're going to need is one of your panels and a bone folder. Now, each rosette can be made up of four panels or eight panels. The choice is yours. Or, of course, you can use your pieces for different projects. And I'll hopefully show you a couple of samples for that shortly. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to take it and we're going to fold it directly in half. Folding that and using our bone folder to just burnish across it. Now, if it's easier for you, think of this as a compass. So we have our north, east, south and west. So what we've done is we've taken the north element and we've folded it to match the south element. Now we're going to open that up and we're now going to take our east to our west. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to fold that across. But in short, all we have really done is folded it in both directions. So we've made a sort of plus sign through the middle here. Now, what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to try and tuck this side and this side inwards into the middle of the shape. So we are taking our north and our east and we are bringing them together. And we're taking our south and our west and we're bringing them together on the opposite side. And you'll soon find that they will just tuck in and we can fold down. So we end up with this sort of heart shaped panel with this style of design. Once again, we're going to take our bone folder. And we're just going to burnish over the top of it to keep it nice and flat. Now, you may at some stage feel burnishing it is not needed, but burnishing will really bar sort of bond them creases and make it easier. It will also make it slightly flatter when it's on actually on your card and built up as a rosette. 
Now for the next part to this, our next stage, we're going to pick our side here. Now you're going to see that we have created a front set of panels and a back set of panels to our piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the front panels and we're going to fold them into the middle. So again, there's a crease line there. So you're going to feel it go into that crease line and match up. We're going to use our bone folder to once again go across them and make sure that the crease is nice and firm on this side. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So we're going to bring that in. We're going to use our bone folder and we're going to firmly crease that crease. Now you can either leave the panels up or we can do different techniques with them that we're going to be looking at in the next folds. But this is your basic first fold. And this is the part that you would use eight of or four, depending on how full you wish for your rosette to be. We're going to do all four folds and then I'll show you how to glue one together because it doesn't matter which fold you're using from the packaging or the ideas we've given you, they will all glue together in exactly the same way. For fold two, we're going to work in exactly the same way as we just did. And you'll find this with all four folds. They all match in the same way. So a little bit quicker this time. We're going to take our north to our south and we're going to burnish. We're going to open up and we're going to take our east to our west and burnish. And then once again, we're going to take our north to our east and tuck it in. And we're going to take our south to our west and tuck that in. So we're once again back at our sort of heart shape that I mentioned earlier. And now this is where we can start thinking about our different folds. For fold two, we're going to do exactly the same as we did before. We're going to fold in to the middle our top two panels. So following so far up to section seven or, or idea seven, instruction seven on um, our packaging. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to open these back out. So we're back to the full heart of the two levels, just as we was before. And we're going to open up that top piece. So you can open it up and we're going to take the side line here and we're going to push it onto the inside of our design. So it's folding on the inside, making that side double the thickness. Slightly different way of using them. We're then going to take it the same on the opposite side and we're going to open that one up. And we're once again going to push that onto the inside. So tucking in and folding back. And now what we've created is a more springy sort of panel. You will notice that that will open up and we've got double the height to it, double the spring to it. So again, if you really want these to sort of pop out and give dimension, that can look really nice. Not mentioned so much in the instructions here, but it's up to you. If you want to, you can then fold that top piece up as well. So it gives you even more dimension. And you're going to find this. There are lots of different folds out there and ways that you can interpret them or change them about or interlock the different techniques and ways that we're using them. So the choice really is yours. But that one is fold number two. For fold three, we're going to repeat all of the same steps as we just did with fold two. So we're going to take our piece, we're going to fold it in half, we're going to burnish across the line, we're going to open it out, fold it on the opposite direction and burnish. We're then going to tuck in them two opposite sides once again, exactly the same as we have been doing. We're going to burnish those as well. We're then going to bring up the sides and fold them into the middle, exactly the same as we did on fold one and two. And we're going to burnish those again. At this point, just like fold three, we're going to take these top panels and we're going to open that out and we're going to open that out the actual panel and we're going to fold that into the inside. And we're then going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So we're going to open and we're going to open and then we're going to take that panel and post it down into the inside of that piece. And we're then going to use our bone folder to make sure that them folds are nice and burnished. Now, as I showed you last time, we have our two pieces at the top here. This time, all we're going to do is take our top set of triangles, our top piece, and we're going to fold that back on the inside. And we're going to fold it right the way down so that the crease is or the side is level with the side that we've come down from. And we're going to pop that down and we're going to burnish over that. I'm going to lift this up so you can hopefully see it. So we've literally, in theory, folded down that top panel. We're then going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So we're going to fold that down and we're going to make sure that the side is level with the side of the panel. And we're going to go across that with our tool. Now this, once again, not only gives us that sort of springy effect because we've got that extra layer underneath, 
but we can now fold these up bring them into the center just as we would and we now have like this shirt collar effect where we can actually bring these out and they will now give you even more dimensions not only do you have the springy part at the top you also have that sort of collar effect which will also give you more dimension and when we actually put these all together they're going to nest really neatly and give you lots more dimension to your project especially good when we want to bring in gems and put them on the lower levels or maybe go around with our glitters and decorate you're going to get to see a little bit more of each of the panels and that completes fold three for fold four we're going to do a very similar idea again so what we're going to do this time is we're going to take our panel and we're going to fold it in half and we're going to burnish it exactly the same as we have been in all of the other steps we're going to do the same in the opposite direction we're going to burnish that and then we're going to tuck them sides in exactly the same as we have been so that we end up with our two top pieces once again resembling a heart this time we're going to once again fold the outside pieces to the center so this should all seem very familiar by now because it's exactly the same as we've been doing for the previous ones and we're going to fold that one down now instead of any other techniques of opening and tucking in or, or folding back the corners this time all we're simply going to do is open these out and instead of folding them to the front we're going to fold them to the inside instead so we're just folding them back now you don't have to do it as i have which is fold them into the middle but i find that slightly easier if you fold it into the middle and then literally force it back on itself but the choice is yours you can do it in a different fashion if you prefer but we'll pop them down and we're going to once again burnish over the top of them now this time what we have created if we bring it up and show you is we can bring this part up in the middle here and then we have these two pieces which are going to spring out the sides and again give us a different dimension and a slightly different shape so you really can play around with these folds and play around to create different styles you can even do different folds on different pieces and interlock them if you wish to the choice really is up to you this is just a few ideas in ways that you can play around with them and as i mentioned earlier there is so much inspiration out there for different folds um, a quick search online will soon fold, find you lots of tuitions and videos and, and write-ups of different ideas including using your panels in different ways so again if we don't wish to turn them all into one rosette we could turn them into butterflies or we can do slightly different folds and turn them into christmas trees or like i mentioned earlier there's no reason why we can't just use them as corner elements to hold on larger panels so there really is a lot of ways we can use them other than building them up as one medallion if you do wish to build them as one medallion though and one rosette this is also really easy to do so i'm going to bring in just a piece of card i have just a, a one and a half inch piece of card and i have some cosmic shimmer glue that i've already decanted into a smaller bottle and i'm going to go across this adding glue to it so that it is ready to take on our panels now we're going to start by popping that down and we're going to take our panel and we're going to pop the one on the top here we're then going to take our next one and we're going to pop it by the side now the nice bit about having wet glue running underneath here is we've got that freedom to move them around a little bit if we need to we're then going to take our next panel and pop that on and then we're going to take our last panel and pop that onto the side here now this is using the very first fold in the little booklet um, if you wish to stick to that you can do and as you can see if you wish to you can of course use just four panels to make your shapes you don't have to go any further than that if you don't want to if you'd like to add more dimension to them take more panels so i'm going to take another four and i'm going to add some glue onto the reverse of each panel and we're going to post them into the gaps this will cover the join lines of where our first four panels have been built so literally slide it in and tuck it down and there is your first one in there we're then going to take it to our next panel we're going to add some more glue onto this one and we're going to slide that down into the middle as well we're then going to take our next side so this is our seventh piece in total and we're going to slide that one in as well and then lastly we're going to take our eighth one in our final gap and we're going to add this one in too 
Now the part in the middle here, this is a really good place to pop a gem or an old button or a fancy button or an embellishment if you wish to. But that will create your rosette that you can then pop onto your card or you could stick a couple back to back and turn them into hanging Christmas tree decorations or you could use them in your home decor if you wish to. The options really are quite endless. Now just to show you a few cards using a few of the folds that we've just covered. We have these cards which are done with the very first fold. So as you can see, we've got a small element here on the top of that card. We can go for larger pieces with sparkly gems in the middle and a bit of glitter. If you wish to do fold one. For fold two, which was our springy design, remember that one that just popped up? This is fold two used to create our rosette on this card. And you may see some glitter around the edges of that one. Or if you wish to, we can just stick to four panels, of course, with any of the folds. But this is the springy fold with just four panels. And the other four have been used on the corners with a different fold in mind. If you like the look of that tucked back corner design, then this is one I've done in vellum. So again, think of playing around with different mediums and heat embossed in gold and then tucked back the corners to give us this sort of 3D element and a bit more of a, a sort of geometric design because we've included more scores or folds on them. If you wish to make easel cards or more fancy cards, then of course you can use the elements to build up and create easel cards with as well. And this again is one where the foot corners are actually tucked back to give you a different style. And then we have another couple here to share with you as well. This one is showing you fold four, where we've sort of made them points fold up into these nice big dim dimensional triangles. And on this card again, we have a sentiment on there as well. And then our last one again is done with one of our pixie sparkle colours and this time including two on there so it looks a little bit more like hanging baubles or Christmas decorations if you wanted it to. Well I hope you enjoyed seeing just a few of the fonts that you can create. As I've mentioned several times there is a lot more inspiration for the wonderful world of teabag folding on the web already and there's even printed books that you can get a hold of showing you lots more folds and techniques so hopefully this has really give you an idea of what you could be creating with the dies with the stamps and the paper pads now of course don't forget at craft mania all of this is still available at the moment with 15 percent off so you can buy your dies or your stamps they're 12.99 individually and they're on offer at 11 pounds and 4p your paper pads should be 9.99 but they're currently reduced to eight pounds and 49p each or you could go big and get the whole lot which would give you all of the different dies and the stamps and both paper pads and that should be 123.99 and it's currently on offer at just 99.99 don't forget with craft mania whenever you spend over five pounds it's free uk pmp and if you do live internationally and wish to have that item shipped to you that's no problem at all. We can post anywhere in the world. And at the time of filming, our um, postage internationally is capped at just £10. You can find out more about that and our current rates on Craftmania itself. And the address for that is www.craftmaniacraft.com. If you don't like to order online, that's absolutely fine. Daphne is waiting with our call centre to take your orders. And the phone number for the, her and the rest of the team is 01493 843 666. If you've enjoyed today's video, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so that you get more notifications. And if you'd like to, don't forget to come and join the Create with Craft Mania and Jamie Rogers group on Facebook, where you'll see lots of inspiration from this and plenty more projects and products along the way. Thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll get to see you again soon. Bye for now.